today on Beyond Six Seconds. If you know what your core values are and you're aware of it and you stick to that, things will gravitate towards you and success will be a byproduct of living out your core values. Welcome to Beyond Six Seconds, the podcast that goes beyond the six second first impression to share the extraordinary stories and achievements of everyday people. I'm your host, Carolyn Keel. On today's episode, I'm speaking with Michael Basagre. Michael is a dedicated husband and father of three beautiful children. He's also the founder of Mometas and a 10-year packaging consultant based in New Zealand. Michael's vision is to help enable young adults between the ages of 15 and 30 to succeed while transitioning out of key life milestones such as leaving school or university, getting your first job, or looking for that next step in your career. In addition, Michael is dedicated to helping people discover a passion for personal development by helping uncover their core values. Michael, welcome to the podcast. Well, thank you, Carolyn. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, I'm so happy to have you here today. So yeah, I'd love to learn more about Mometa. So uh, tell me a little bit about it and what inspired you to start it? Yeah, sure. Well, it really was pushed from, I guess, people I started helping throughout my early 20s, mid 20s and other roles that I was in. And so my natural talent was just to sort of help these guys, these new people coming into the company. And I would just walk them through some of the things that I would do that would help me get to where I was at that particular point in my life. And I didn't really think anything of it as such. And what had happened is um, when I left those companies, all those people I helped became successful in their own right, or they moved up or they progressed. And they'd always come back to me and said, you're quite a, an inspiration in my life. And you're the reason why they are doing what they're doing right now. And I never thought anything of it. But I did that several times and it came sort of a theme and the same process started happening. And then more and more people that I was helping were saying, you should start this up as a business. You should start this coaching and do this a little bit more seriously. So that's what pushed me towards starting my Metas. Wow. And were the people that you were helping and mentoring at work, were these all younger people or was it a wide range of people? Yeah, predominantly it was the younger generation. So they were either their first job or they were coming into a role for the first time or a transition, as you mentioned in the um, introduction, out of either a first job, university or high school. So yeah, they were certainly, I guess, in that range that I just talked about. I see. Yeah. And what kinds of things did you help them navigate or, or mentor them through? I know you mentioned people who are at a transition point. So even at work, people were coming to work. Maybe it was their first job working with you at the same company. Did you kind of help them get used to corporate life or think of different ways to think about their career or what kinds of things did you help them navigate? Yeah, it was, it was all of those sort of things. And predominantly what I guess I was coaching or at least subconsciously teaching there, Carolyn, was how to add value for themselves and how to communicate within that organization how to make sure that the role that they were in brought value to the company and as said to themselves and how they interacted. Um, I think that was some of the things that I learned throughout my, my own career. And I wanted to pass those particular learnings and teachings to these guys just to make sure that they could get the head start and not feel overwhelmed with, with a new role and, and not knowing how to navigate, as you pointed out, through that new world or that new role. Yeah, I mean, it's so important to have, well, really to have mentors throughout your entire career, but especially when you're first starting out and you've, you know, you're coming out of school and you've never really worked in a work situation, whether that's corporate or, you know, really any type of structure. It's really great to have someone there to help you understand how to show your value, you know, how to fit in with the culture, what to do, what not to do, and really how to shine and grow in your career. So that's great. So now through Mometas, you started that up as a business and Now you continue to help young people through transitions, whether they're leaving school or or starting work or looking for their career. What kind of services do you offer through that? And how is it similar to what you used to do with your young colleagues at work? Yeah, sure. So I guess, Carolyn, when I sort of decided to start my meters, obviously there was an element that you had to have some form of a structure. I think for the most part leading into that, the structure that I was probably talking to these particular colleagues of mine or people that I was helping out at the time, They were probably in my head, but never on paper, so to speak. So it was an opportunity to dot down what I thought I was teaching and what I had taught myself, so to speak, and what I had learned through my experiences. And through that, I ended up developing seven fundamental tools, which were basically what I use every day to help me navigate through the corporate world or navigate through the job process and navigate through life, so to speak. And so evidently, I applied those particular fundamental tools with my clients and my students that I teach. 
And evidently that's where we start our coaching session is trying to understand each of those particular tools and how they could use them to help them navigate through their role or add value. Well, that's great. What kind of tools are the seven tools? Yeah, sure. So I start off with self-awareness mm-hmm. and follow that by change your mindset. And then the third tool is decide what your core values are, followed by building a solid character. And then the fifth is begin believing in that. The sixth is to inspire that personal change. And then finally, it's to encourage positive change. So an ongoing, continuous improvement. But I tend to spend a lot of time in the awareness and that core value range. And I teach a lot of my students and my clients that the very first step really is to be self-aware of what you want. And it's easier said than done. Yeah, definitely. I think that's important at any age to really step back and take that awareness of what your interests are, what your value is, and really what you're feeling in in each situation that you're in throughout your career. Well, that's great. And also through Mometa's, there's also a blog aspect of it as well. You write stories pretty regularly that are based on uh, career or, or life experiences that fit in, I guess, with the type and the style of coaching that you do with young people. So what inspired you to start the blog part of Mometa's? I think it was when I decided that I would start writing a blog and it was a pretty scary concept to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and everyone you know, just assumes that uh, you can just write a blog and it'd be fairly straightforward. But the reality is what it's, you know, you're putting your thoughts to paper, so to speak, or for those to read. So I wanted to make sure that whatever I was going to put out, I had either applied myself or learned or was going through. And so the theme of the weekly blogs are to try and extract some of those experiences I've had or lessons I've learned or are learning so that I can continue to share that in a wider space. So obviously the coaching one-on-one is is really good, but this helps me help solidify some of the thoughts that I'm having and also just make sure that I'm adapting, um, adjusting to what uh, the market is saying what, again, I'm always continuing to learn about so that I can reveal that um, or provide those insights for anyone that follows my meters. Ah, yeah, I see. Yeah, you know, it, it's a way to build up your brand and share your thoughts, but also continue to, in some ways, show and demonstrate the type of thought leadership and types of coaching that you do with young people and how you help them. Absolutely. You know, I said in your bio as well that you currently are working as a packaging consultant, so you have your full-time job, and then you're running Mometa's sort of as your, I don't want to say your side hustle, but your um, your yes. extra business. How do you balance the two? Yeah, it's a good question. And I was talking about this actually with a friend and colleague of mine a while back. And the way that I look at it, Carolyn, is that these particular things that I'm passionate about and that I pour my energy in, which is obviously the family uh, life, my current, I guess, nine to five job and Mometa's, they all symbolize for me core values that I'm presenting every day. And so from the outside looking in, it may look fairly chaotic that I've got all these things that I'm doing. But the reality is, as I said before, the the core values are embedded across all of those particular parts of my life. And therefore, my alignment with them, they don't feel like hard work as such, but more importantly, feel like energy and giving me inspiration every day that I'm able to do each of those particular things. So It's a weird perspective, but I don't necessarily look at it as work versus, as I said, a way to to continue to inspire me every day. And so that's where I get my energy is the feedback, the fact that I know that I'm getting some form of an impact in each of those particular areas of my life. And that continues to push me and continues to drive me towards balancing each of those components in a way that uh, doesn't compromise my values. So that's how um, I balance those particular areas. Yeah, that's great. And it's, important to uh, work on things that give you energy. I think that everything that we're passionate about, at least there's some form that keeps us going and gives us energy and makes us excited and makes us realize the impact that we can have on the world. So, I mean, I certainly feel that with this podcast and it sounds like you feel the same with all of the work that you do with uh, Mometas and with your full-time job and of course with your family as well. So that's great. Absolutely. Yeah. So speaking of feedback, you know, what kind of feedback have you received from the people that you've worked with in Mometas? And I don't know if you have any, maybe like a particular success story that was really meaningful that you'd like to share on the show. Um, would love to hear what kind of impact Mometas has been having. Yeah, sure. There was a, a 
a client of mine who who started off actually as a colleague of mine in a different company, and we just got to know each other quite well. And then when I started my meters, we officially sort of started the one-on-one coaching a little bit more consistently, and as said, sort of structured it in a way that. I wanted him to succeed long term. And evidently, he managed to go through those fundamental tools and we went through the awareness aspect, um, but more importantly, went through what was his core values. And he discovered what his core values were, uh, which for him was providing for his family and giving his family the future that he didn't particularly have growing up. Mm -hmm. So that was sort of a really big driver for him and adding value to his community. And so he was in a particular role, an office bound role. And what had happened was he was starting to get some success in that particular role and he wanted to move into a new role within that organization. And he tried interviewing for about five different roles within about a year. And unfortunately, he wasn't successful in either of them. He got close a couple of times, but each time he'd come back and would have a session and he'd be fairly disappointed and he didn't know what he was doing wrong. And You know, he was supposedly doing everything right in his current job, which thought that would lead him to um, a new promoted job within that current organization. So we keep pushing, we keep coaching, we keep making sure that he added value into his current role. And in this current role that he was in, he was in a sales role. And as I said, it was office bound. And he started winning all these accounts off his competitors. And it was a result of him just having a really positive mindset Um, not letting that failure set him back. And as I said, continuing to add value. So going back to his core values and thinking about his family. So that's what he kept doing every day in that current role, despite all those uh, setbacks. Mm -hmm. And so again, he was winning all these accounts and the accounts he was winning off, uh, his competitors ended up reaching out to him and said, who is this person Hmm. that keeps uh, winning all these accounts off us? And Mm -hmm. so they reached out to this particular person and said, Uh, We want you to work for us because you keep winning all these accounts off us. And evidently, that's how he got his new role. And so it was a really cool story for me just because it reminded me that when you have your core values, the base that you work off and you believe and you work off that every day, success is a byproduct of that. And for this particular person, his success was getting promoted and it he only thought about it within that internal organization. He never thought about it externally or getting tapped on the shoulder, so to speak. And that was a real cool story to tell for the fact that if you know what your core values are and you're aware of it and you stick to that, as I said, things will gravitate towards you and success will be a byproduct of um, living out your core values. Yeah. I mean, that's a really interesting story. And I totally understand with, you know, if you know your core values and you know sort of generally what you're looking for and the direction that you want to go in, but it also helps you remain open to other opportunities besides just one particular pathway. So as you said, he was really just thinking about promotion within the same company, but through your coaching and just through understanding his values, it seems like other opportunities, he was able to attract them or able to just open his mind so that he could see this other opportunity that he didn't even think of before with the competitor. So I think that's good advice for everyone's career is that, you know, to have that general, sort of a general goal and a general direction to move towards, but to, uh, to stay open to possibilities. Absolutely. And it was encouraging because again, you know, to be rejected five or six times is is very challenging mentally. Oh yeah. And if you don't have anything to fall back on, i.e. your core values as your foundation, it becomes very hard to pick yourself up and, and keep moving forward. But luckily for this particular person, we had created a mindset that enabled him to keep pushing forward and just to keep adding those values and be successful within his current role that, again, it gravitated people outside of his organization or out in the community, i.e. his competitor, to be noticed and evidently um, get him a new role. So it happened to be the one that he was looking for. That's fantastic. And even though we have a, an allegedly a strong job market, at least in this country, here in the U.S., I still personally know many people who, you know, are job searching, whether they already have jobs and they want to move to their next role or they're unemployed and they're looking for a role who are just constantly facing that rejection that you were just talking about. And it is absolutely disheartening to get rejected multiple times for something that you may feel you're qualified for and you feel like you've worked hard enough to deserve and it's just not working out. And, and certainly I've been there in, in my career where it's taken several tries and several no's to finally get the open door to the yes and move on in my own career. So in terms of the core values, what advice would you have for people who maybe are facing a lot of rejection 
to sort of build on and be aware of their values to kind of open their minds towards new opportunities? Yeah, sure. I think when I teach core values in particular, it's quite an interesting theme to get your head around, especially if you you don't sort of really understand what a core value is. So the first thing I tend to do with my clients and my students is I get them to tell me what their goals are. And often it's fairly standard answers such as, you know, I want to be a manager or I want to be promoted for here. I want to have a nice house. I want to have a nice car, so on and so forth. And so when I ask them why, there's no substance behind as to why they want those particular things in their life. And so immediately for me, Carolyn, that indicates that there is no foundation behind any of that. And so part of my teaching is to try and get beyond or below the surface value, um, which I identify that as, and get down to the core values. Now, the technique that I tend to use is quite a, an odd one, I guess, when I sort of talk about it. And it's really getting down to the end of your life. And um, Dr. Stephen Covey talked about this in his Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, where you start with the end in mind. Mm -hmm. And so a similar theme, what I get my students to do is to pretend that they're at their funeral and they pick anywhere between three to 10 really important people in their lives. And they get to envision them talking about uh, their life at their funeral. And what happens is, They talk about themselves through other people and what gets extracted is their core values, but they just don't know about it yet. And so then I get them to get all their information and and all the stories that they tell about themselves. And what evidently happens is they find themes within each of these individuals that they've chosen. And normally you get sort of three to five different themes and they become your core values. And so once they realize that their mum, for example, wasn't talking about Joe's fancy car that he had or fancy job, Mm -hmm. but rather his kindness or his ability to help people that just eliminates all that surface value talk and gets right down to the core value. And so once someone's established that those things are now important to them, it opens up their mind to the opportunities out there. So for example, they might be talking about helping people succeed or being kind. Now, if you sort of look at that from a jobs perspective, there are a number of areas that person can go into, whereas if they hadn't have known that, they could have just gone into one particular category or one particular industry and just thought that was it for them and not have that openness or that opportunity to think about what other jobs have kindness, what other jobs have the ability to help other people succeed. And so that's really what core values enable someone to do is to really broaden their horizon without changing their direction, so to speak. Yeah, I could totally see how that ties in. So would you recommend to your clients that when they're interviewing for jobs that they bring out or or talk about what their core values are? I mean, in relation to the job that they're looking at, does that sort of fit into the interview or is it more of a guidance in the background to help them find the right opportunities? It's it's a good point there and a good question there, Carolyn. I've encouraged them to actually talk about it because they may apply or look for a job which may have the intentions of their core values aligned with them. And if they talk about it during the interview and they realize it isn't, then they know straight away that their core values isn't aligned with this particular role. And you want to find that out pretty much straight away as opposed to later on in that particular role. So I encourage my clients and students to talk about their core values in the sense of how it could help the organization, but why it is so important that they have these values. And often if a company is looking for someone of those particular values, then you tend to be aligned a hell of a lot better if you weren't talking about them. Definitely. And then, you know, you fit into the overall culture of the company and it probably also helps you know, select out certain companies that have values that conflict with yours um, early on in the process so you don't get stuck somewhere that you don't feel like you fit in or, or just isn't aligned with what's important to you. Yeah, totally. Absolutely. Yeah, fantastic. Tell me about the biggest challenge you faced in either launching Mometas or, or running it and how have you either addressed or overcome that? I think the biggest challenge for me really has been just trying to find that balance that we talked about a little bit earlier and just trying to make sure that I was doing this for all the right reasons. And I was probably at a certain point, probably year two there, Carolyn, where I was trying to figure out, you know, do I push this harder? Do I not push this harder? Do I charge this? Do I not charge this? 
And I just remembered going right back to part of the reasons as to why I started it. And it was just to, to help other people succeed mm-hmm. and to pass on my experiences. And so I guess when you get a little bit of traction in a business or a, a new venture, you know, you want to make sure that you always try and find the reasons why you started in the first place. I think it's real easy to get distracted by, okay, you're starting to get a bit more following, um, more readership. Shall I now start adding advertisements or anything of that nature to try and monetize it? And so I think if you're not aware of the reasons for starting it, again, you can derail from your values and your mission of why you started that business in the first place. But I think for me, it was keeping my vision close, my purpose close to me and making sure that if I did hit a roadblock, that I had that fairly close by with me in reference so that I could always sort of fall back on that and go, this was the reason why I started it. Or if a blog, for example, wasn't successful or had some bad feedback, then again, I can go back and go, well, what could I do better? What was the reason for me writing this particular blog so that again, I can get back up and find the energy to keep on going. Yeah. I guess, again, going back to those the core values and the purpose of why you're doing something. And I think it ties back into that, that energy that you were talking about before that keeps, uh, you know, creatives and, and content creators like you moving forward and just focused on the goal of how you want to help people. Yeah, totally can relate to that. With podcasting, it's a little similar yes. as well. But, you know, every time that I get feedback from listeners and I'm sure that you get feedback from your readers and the people that you work with, it helps add to that energy and reminds you why you're doing what you're doing. So that's awesome. Absolutely. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you've been running Mometas for about three years. Uh, Long term, what goals do you have for Mometas? Yeah, really good question. I was at an entrepreneurship uh, mastermind class earlier in the year and someone asked me that question and I wasn't prepared for it as such. Mm -hmm. And again, um, I had to think about it for a bit, but I went back again and referred back to why I started it. And the long-term goal is, is obviously to help as many people as possible in that range that I just, that we talked about earlier on. And I used to think that there was an actual end time for it. By five years, I needed to have this amount of readership or this amount of traction or Mm -hmm. have made this amount of money. And it got me really thinking about it from a a long-term perspective. So again, I applied some of my own teachings to myself and and kind of reverse engineered that. And what ended up coming out of it was actually, this is a forever thing for me. This is part of my core values. And so there isn't really an end goal as such, i.e. by five years, I want to have X amount of followers or X amount of readership. It was just part and parcel of who I am as a person and as part of my core values. So the long-term goal really is just to keep adding to that, keep writing the blogs, keep adding value to those that want um, me to help them and adding value out in the marketplace by communicating my experiences. So at this particular point in time, it's just to continue what I'm doing. And if there's a break point that tips me over, then so be it. Otherwise, I'll continue to just keep helping those that want my help. Fantastic. Just it sounds like to help as many people as possible. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. So how can people get in touch with you if they want to learn more about Mometas and read the blog? Mometas.com is obviously the website and mometas.com forward slash blogs is where um, all the blogs are published. And I'm always open to getting communicated via email at michael at mometas.com. You know, I get a lot of emails coming through about uh, certain topics I talk about and how I can help them or if there's any particular topic that you want me to research or talk about. Again, I'm more than happy to, to investigate that as well. Wonderful. And, you know, as we said in your bio, you're based in New Zealand, but do you work mm. with clients who are mainly within the country or are they sort of anywhere in the world? Yeah, predominantly it has been very localized, but I've had um, a couple of sessions outside of New Zealand. So again, it's open to anyone and everyone that feels that I can help them or add value to their lives. Awesome. And uh, put you on the spot a little bit. I saw on your website that you do, in some circumstances, offer like one free introductory coaching session for young people. Is that something that you, you still continue to offer? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think, you know, knowing my own experiences as a young person that you don't tend to have a lot of uh, disposable income or free cash available. So I know the the importance of 
as you talked about earlier, Carolyn, a mentor earlier in your professional life or career or transitions. So, you know, I make sure that, again, the reason I started this was to enable young people to succeed. And if money is a barrier, then it kind of goes against the philosophy of Mometers. So, yeah, a lot of that is still very much embedded in the organization. All right. That's great. So, you know, if you're listening and you're between the ages of 15 and 30 and you're curious to learn more about Michael and his coaching and his blog through Mometas, uh, definitely check it out. And it sounds like, you know, if you're interested, you can have a, a free session with him just to learn more about what it's all about and potentially get that support in your career that you're looking for. So, yeah, thank you, Michael. That's wonderful. That's a really great offering to young people and to my younger listeners here. Oh, you're welcome. Fantastic. So thank you so much, Michael, for being on my podcast today. As we close out, is there anything else that you'd like our listeners to know or anything else that they can help or support you with? Yeah, obviously, um, spreading the word is always a nice way to try and make uh, my readers get out there and help as many people out as possible. So obviously sharing um, this podcast and, and other blogs and contents that there was always greatly appreciated. But if I can sort of uh, add a note to end, which is just self-improvement is something that often is labeled as a negative or sort of a geeky thing to have. But what I've learned uh, throughout my career is that you continuously become successful by learning and just having the ability to adapt and adjust and have a growth mindset, basically. And so one of the mantras I have, Carolyn, is basically be a student of your own life. So often there's this transition out of our educational lifetime, either it's university or high school or college, and your mind is sort of conditioned to thinking, okay, I don't need to learn anymore because I've learned everything. I don't need to read a textbook anymore. Mm -hmm. But in fact, it's the opposite. As soon as you leave, that's probably where you want to learn even more. So I would highly recommend that you read plenty of books, listen to plenty of podcasts like Carolyn's, Mm -hmm. and you continue to be a student of your own life by learning, adapting, and educating yourself. Right. Wonderful. Yeah. Be that lifelong learner is very important. Absolutely. Wonderful. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Carolyn. Appreciate it. Thanks for listening to Beyond Six Seconds. Please help us spread the word about this podcast. Share it with a friend. Give us a shout out on your social media or write a review on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast player. You can find all of our episodes on our website, www.beyondsixseconds.com. Until next time.